hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Anita and this is Sewing Yogi. So this is part two of the Sewing With Me Sew Along of the um, Sew Over It Emma Dress. So if you've watched part one, you'll know that I started off thinking it would be a nice easy make and I would have a fantastic dress in a couple of hours and it didn't turn out that way. I had quite a few issues fitting wise um, with the princess seams and I just, you know, I was really completely naive, went in thinking, oh yeah, I'll be fine, even though I knew I'd had problems before with princess seams. I completely forgot about those and just went with it. Um, but it turned out it was quite informative for myself and maybe also for some of you to see that not everything goes perfectly for everyone all the time and if you do have problems fitting then um, you're not alone. So this is part two where hopefully I will get to finish off this dress and I think that I have just got to put the skirt together first and I've looked at the instructions and it tells you to do the skirt. I thought I would be attack attaching sleeves and facings but no, it tells you to do the skirt first. So I'm gonna do the skirt, I'm gonna follow the instructions and do it that way. So I shall be doing the skirt, um, attaching it, and then I think they say to tackle the sleeves and the facings. So we shall get started and fingers crossed, all will be good. Okay, so I now got the front skirt piece laid out flat. Um, on the instructions, it actually tells you to place the wrong side facing up, which I think is wrong because of the way it tells you to do your pleats. Um, I think your pleats will be on the wrong side. So I think to place the fabric facing up, it's better for you to actually work out what you need to do. So the scalloped edge at the top is the top of the skirt. And first of all, it tells you to bring the outermost notch on the top to the innermost notch on the centre front. So I've obviously this has been laid out flat, so this was cut on the fold, so therefore that would be the fold. So I think it means the centre front of this one half of the fabric. So we've got a little notch here, right in the centre, and you have two notches at these points here, which will be on the pattern when you cut it out. So it says to take this outer edge notch here and bring it right in towards the center. So folding it all the way over and getting those notches just to line up. And there should be another little notch on the back here to show you where the fold is. So that's where you've got your fold. And then just literally let your fabric come back on itself and line up those edges and pin that in place so it doesn't move. And just place another pin there to stop that from moving around. Okay, and then it says to do that on the other side as well. So bringing this side over, again, this notch here on the outer edge of the fabric to the center front of this part here. So finding that notch on the center and again, lining them up and again you'll have a little notch on the back here to show the fold or indicate the fold let the fabric just fold back on itself and then again just pin that there And then it says to take the notch from the center front and take it all the way back to the notch you've just done. So again, this will be the center front. There are no more notches there. So these ones are at the center front. We're literally gonna take this and fold it back towards where we've just created that little pleat. Bring it so they touch each other. So pinch it with your fingers and again, there'll be a notch underneath to indicate the fold. Let that fabric fall back onto itself. And we're just gonna pin this here. And again, another little pin there, just stop that from moving. 
Okay, and you can see you've just created a little pleat. So, if this had been the wrong side facing up, this would have looked um, wrong because you would have had this shape on the front of your skirt, which I'll show you. You would have had that uh, sort of boxed shape on the front of your skirt, which is completely wrong. So I think they've maybe just um, done that slightly wrong in their instructions. So again, we'll do this side, take that notch from the centre front, bring it right over to touch the other one. So they're both touching, pinch it with your fingers and let that fabric just fall back on itself, getting those raw edges to line up. Pin it so it doesn't move. Okay, and then you can see that you have your pleats. It's much easier with fabric that's a bit stiffer. So if we were doing this in a cotton, you'd be able to see those pleats really clearly and crisply, um, but because it's a jersey. Yeah, but there you go, there's your pleats. So it says now just to baste them um, or tack them. So usually on your sewing machine, baste or um, tack those little pieces in place, making sure that it's within the seam allowance. So the seam allowance is 1.5 centimeters or 5 eighths of an inch. Just making sure that you're kind of basing them within probably a centimetre from the edge. Okay, so I've just tapped those um, pleats in place. So that just holds them nicely. And now I have to do the same for the back pieces. machine tag or machine base them in place so that they don't move around and the next stage I think is putting those pieces together so now we've um, tacked or basted those pleats in place we've now got to attach the front to the back skirt pieces so I've just left my two pieces which I know are the um, the centre back pieces with the pins in and then I'm just laying over the front piece and I'm going to pin all the way down through the side seams on both sides. seams and I will just go to the sewing machine now and stitch those up in place. Now it does tell you to overlock um, or zigzag the edges and on the bodice piece on the first my first attempt I did actually overlock the seams but I found that it created quite a lot of bulk for this fabric um, and this fabric doesn't really fray or anything so I think I'm not going to do that I'm going to leave them and I think because it's quite drapey and soft, it really shows up if I overlock it. It looks quite bulky underneath the seam, so I'm going to leave that. And also I've noticed that my light is going now. Um, I've had such a crazy day today. I've had so many things to do. Um, I had to teach um, a class this morning. And then um, I went for my run. And then I came back and had a shower at my lunch. And then I've had to have two people come round to give us quotes for painting the outside of the house which took quite a while and literally every time I've tried to get to do this something has come up so now I'm losing the light so I may have to stop at some point and start again tomorrow when the light is better but I shall stitch this up now and see how I go 
So I'm going to start right at the top and work my way downwards. You may be wondering why I've got a post-it note on my machine with a bit of masking tape. I find it really difficult to see the, um, the lines on this uh, machine. I'm the same with most machines, to be honest. I've always had this problem. It's not as I'm getting older. I've just always had that problem. Even when I was younger um, at school, I could never work out where my my lines were and I'd always lose where I'm supposed to follow. So this is just my more obvious way of knowing where my seam allowances should be. So I just use my um, ruler just to make sure it's 1.5 centimetres or 5 eighths of an inch. I don't know why, I just um, find this a lot easier. So I'm going to start once again in from the edge of the fabric, not too close towards the edge as I know that my machine will just eat this fabric up as it has done before. And again, I've got it on a width of one and a zigzag stitch and the length of 1.5. saying to attach the bodice piece. So I'm just going to plow on, carry on and see where I get. So taking your bodice piece, have the skirt facing upwards, right side up and then we'll take our bodice piece and turn the right side down, having it upside down so you want the bottom of the bodice piece facing the skirt top. And then we've just got to align up our notches and our side seams and make sure everything is lined up. So I don't know whether it, maybe the fabric is stretched out slightly, we shall find out. Um, just checking as well that you've got your princess seam pointing out towards the side seam. So make sure that's folded back and I'll line up and pin as I go. stretching of any of the uh, pieces so it's all fitted perfectly together which is unusual um, for me um, but yes yeah, so that's gone nicely and now we've just got to stitch that in place now normally I'm a little cautious with doing things like this I will base this in first just to check now um, in the past when I first started sewing I would just go straight ahead and sew it in and then I find that there was always something slightly wrong or it needed adjusting so having to unpick it was just a bit of a nightmare so I tend to now just paste it in check it first make sure I'm happy with where the seam sits whether it sits on my waist and then if I'm happy I'll stitch it properly okay so I'm going to sew this with the skirt piece facing up and normally I would do this with the bodice piece facing up, but I want to make sure that my um, pleats sit in properly. Um, if I've got them up underneath, I might not notice them as well. I'm just making sure as well that the fabric is lining up. I'm noticing there is some um, discrepancies here with my fabric, so I'm just going to make sure that they are all completely lined up properly before I start stitching it, I don't want any issues later on. Okay, 
Okay, and then again, I'm just basting, so just making sure I've got this right first. with the way it looked it looked great on and so I went ahead and zigzag stitched it so it's been properly stitched now you may have seen in the little clip that I actually put the dress on over my actual dress um, and it looked great so now we're onto the facings and it's saying to align the shoulder seam edges of the facings and place them right sides together and pin them so that they're in line matching so I've got my back pieces over the top front piece, right sides together, and then I'm just gonna line up those edges on the sides. And I've actually noticed that I've not put notches in to my back pieces, but it should be fine. It looks like it's matching okay. Um, if it was another area, I'd probably take them off and put those notches in, but it should be okay. So another day of dark, miserable, cloudy skies, and you may see um, sometimes past the window there's steam coming past from the the heating being on, the central heating. I didn't notice it before, but and then I looked around and thought, oh, what's all that? It's the central heating. And and this morning I was so, so super tired. I could not get up out of bed. I could have slept and slept and slept this morning. Um, but the neighbours are having some work done. And so they came really super early this morning and woke me up. So I couldn't really stay in bed any longer. I had to get up. But yeah, my sleeping pattern has been up and down since the pandemic started. I've had days where I don't sleep very much at all. And my head is really buzzy and I can't stop thinking. And other days I'm just completely wiped out and I just want to sleep and sleep and sleep. So yeah, it's been strange. But right now I'm going to go um, to the machine and stitch these in. Have 
been stitched and as you would see I've pressed the seam allowances towards the front of the bodice as stated in the instructions. So now we're on to attaching the facing to the bodice. So I've got my bodice piece and the bodice and skirt piece facing upwards with my neckline showing and I've got the facing facing downwards, the right side facing downwards. I'm going to now align up from the edges all the way around the neckline and I'm pinning as I go, just making sure the raw edges are lined up and any notches line up. So just go into the notches first. I always find that's easier. You just go to the outer edges of the fabric and then to the notches, neat all those notches up first and then pin in between the notches just in case anything has stretched out. There's quite a few notches in this, so that's quite handy actually. We find that with some patterns, they don't have very many notches. Um, Burner patterns tend to be like that, where there, there are not very many um, notches, which I find quite difficult. sure that that stitches in really nicely. Um, it's better to have too many I think and everything is lining up so now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch that in. stage. Um, the next stage is putting the zip in but I'm not putting a zip in so unfortunately if you want to know how to put the zip in <laughs> I'm not going to do that bit. I'm going to omit the zip because it's a knit fabric. Um, I don't think it really needs the zip. I think you should still be able to get it over the head but I'm going to test it first. I'm going to pin it on for me first because I know I've got to do a slight adjustment to the top of the back. It's a little bit big so I'm going to have to probably take the seam allowance in a little bit more. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to do that next stage. Okay, so I have pinned and stitched or basted the back seam. And I feel like it's just a bit, tiny bit too big. So I'm probably just going to take that in a little bit more. Um, and obviously to finish the facing, what I've done is I've stitched all the way from the top of the facing all the way down towards the bottom of the skirt so that when that facing is turned in, I'm going to open up that seam all the way along, press it and then pull it down and then that should help that to sit and probably put some um, stitches in there just to anchor the facing downwards and then that should be okay on that side 
and finish that facing edge because I hadn't thought about that how I was going to finish that because I'm not putting the zip in however I'm going to put in the sleeves in next because I think if once I've got the sleeves in I can then gauge whether I need to take any in from the back seam for the waist um, because it is just hanging just a tiny little bit and just looking a little bit shapeless so I think it needs cinching in a little bit um, I did do a 10 on the waist and I probably could have done an 8 but I'm going to put the sleeves in now just I need to get these sleeves stitched together so I'm going to take a sleeve piece right sides together I line up the edge of that long side and just pin it and I will do that both and stitch them in ready for putting in to the bodice sleeves pinned into the bodice. right side out um, and I made sure that I pressed the seam allowance towards the back of the garment and then we are now going to put them into the sleeves so just making sure you've got your dress on the wrong side and the sleeve on the right side and then we're going to work out which is the back of the bodice so here's my back bodice and then we are matching the back bodice to the little notches you have on the sleeves. So a double notch is for the back. So that one I think is for the other side. This one should be for this side. So you want to make sure you're just sliding this in to the armhole and making sure that the back bodice is lining up with the back sleeve or two notches. You'll see that there's two double notches. You want to make sure they're matched up. And again, when I first started sewing, because because I didn't really know what the notches were for, I think I ignored those most of the time. So I have no idea whether I had garments that had the sleeves on the wrong way around. I don't think I ever noticed them sitting weirdly, so I must have done it right. Um, but I don't really remember ever matching those up properly. So I'm just pinning the notches first, and then I'm going to line up my underarm seam. Make sure that, that is lined up. So again, what I do is I will measure 1.5 centimeters or five eighths of an inch and mark that with my pin. Go right through the stitching line on that seam and then just check that it's going directly through the seam on the other side at that 1.5. And that should make sure that when it's stitched, the seam allowances are lined up. Generally, for most times it does. On the odd occasion, it doesn't, but it's never really out very far. Um, yeah, just make sure it's 1.5 on that side as well. Keep that pinned. So when you go over it with your sewing machine, I leave the pin in, just being very careful. When I'm going across that, making sure that the needle doesn't hit the needle, the, the pin. Um, once it's gone over, you can take the pin out, and usually that those seams will then line up. Um, I found it's the best way to do it. And then pinning all the way around. So 
So there should be a little notch at the front of the dress. And that should line up with that um, princess seam. Making sure that your seam allowance on that princess seam is pointing towards the side seam. So I use a little pin just to make sure that, that seam is pushed down so it doesn't lift up. And then again, pinning in between the notch and the underarm seam. Making sure it's lined up on the raw edges. And then we come to the top, so there should be a notch right at the top of the sleeve head which will line up with the shoulder seam. And again, just checking that your seams are pointing in the right direction. So yeah, that should be towards the back of the bodice, yeah. And again, you can do the same, just make sure the raw edges line up and pin it. And then just easing in the rest of the fabric between those points where you have lined up the notches. You might find that you need to ease these in a little but with knit fabric it's much much easier than a woven fabric. So just very gently stretching that in a little just to get that to fit. with sleeves I well I dislike putting in sleeves um, it's not my favorite thing in the world and every time I've ever done a sleeve by stitching it straight in I've always found that I've had little um, little ripples or little uh, pleats in the stitching and I've had to unpick it and then redo it again so I'm basting it in first and then once I feel that it's okay and sits in nicely then I will stitch it properly so I'll go and do that now Okay, so I've put the sleeves in and they look really good. They look nice. Um, my underarm seams are smack bang right on where I want them to be, matching perfectly. Fantastic. And there's no little ripples or pleats that I can see. So I think they should be okay. And yeah, I can't see anything. That should be out of place so I'm going to try it on see how it looks see if anything needs to be adjusted and then if all is well I'm going to stitch those in properly and then probably um, call it a day for today as my light is now going and I am pretty tired today my eyes are really sore um, I think I need a good sleep tonight and then hopefully I'll carry on with this tomorrow and get it finished. Um, there isn't much else to do I think from having the sleeves in. We have just got to finish off my back seam before I then stitch the facing in properly. And then obviously hem my sleeves and the bottom and then it should be finished. Okay, 
so I'm just going to show you now the uh, back seam. So I'd already previously basted it and then I put it back on with the sleeves on and I've gone down the back with some pins just to show you um, in chalk I've drawn what my new stitching line looks like. So I've taken it in from that back seam at the top of the facing all the way down and I've curved it in slightly because it was quite gaping around the back of the neck, not loads, but just a little bit. So I've taken it in and then I've taken it back out again for my back because um, I have quite a broad back, uh, muscular back. And then I have gone all the way in and you can probably see this is my lower spine here and I do have a sway back. So I've had to take it in quite a lot here to the um, waist seam that is here and then just literally curved it all the way around back to the seam allowance so um yeah it's quite a lot of fabric i've taken in actually um it's a good inch maybe inch and a half um it's just to measure that yeah it's about an inch and a half i've taken it in but it does sit better with that being cinched in in the back and it curving around to my lower spine it does look a lot nicer Okay, so now we're on to the cuffs for the sleeves. Um, I completely forgot about the cuffs. So we'll do these next. As I've done my sleeves, I've pinned my sleeves in, basted them in, checked them, they were fine. And so I stitched them in and it looks really, really good. I'm really happy with this dress actually. It's looking really nice. So now I am going to do the sleeves. It says to do with, with right sides together, fold the cuffs so that the short edges match. So just folding them. These little short edges, which are um, kind of like, I don't know how you would say that shape. What shape is that? Like a little, no idea, no idea what you call that shape. It's like a little pointed, angly bit. We'll put those together and then stitch them in. just had a delivery from Ikea. I ordered um, a pegboard which I've been trying to get hold of for about a year. So I have this um, room um, as my sewing room now but it was January last year that I decided to make this room my sewing room. Um, it used to be my therapy room for my work and I decided that um, didn't really want it to my, be my therapy room anymore. Um, I could use another room for the therapy and just fold the bed up when I wasn't using it. Um, so yeah, I did it last January. Lockdown happened and I have not been able to get any uh, pegboards. So I think I've tried online a few times and every single time I tried, they were sold out. I couldn't get them. So I was really frustrated, so it's been a year that I've been trying to get hold of these pegboards, but now I've finally, finally got one. So anyway, I'm going to get on and stitch these little pieces here. Okay, so I've just um, stitched those uh, little angly bits, and then it says to open up the seam and fold these in half lengthways. So I'm just opening up the seam. It does tell you to press them, but I never tend to bother pressing them. I just use my fingers to open them out and then fold them in half. And then I just put a few pins in just to get the notches in line and the seam allowance, sorry, the seam. It's just a little notch there, line those up. Another pin halfway round. And then on the other side. So just four pins. And then I'm going to put them onto the actual sleeve. So get hold of the sleeve. And it says with right sides together, match the raw edges of the cuff with the sleeve hem. So I have the Raw edges pointing outwards 
and I just literally slip it right over the sleeve which is right side out let's find my seam and then matching up the raw edges and the notches and pin sewn in and it says to do a three centimeter um, distance from the edge so we're just going to literally top stitch all the way around at three centimeters from the edge um, I was just thinking of how much I have to do on this pattern it's actually quite an involved pattern I think um, I suppose it is pretty much straightforward I think it's perhaps because of all the issues that I had with the princess seams and the neck. If I hadn't I had all those, it might have been a bit of a quicker sew. Um, but yeah, there's quite a few little bits to it. Maybe next time it will be a bit quicker for me, I'm thinking. Um, I think if I had had to put the zip in, that would have taken a bit more effort. I don't mind zips, but it's not my favorite thing in the world, putting in a zip. I will put a zip in, but like the issues I have with the uh, my sway back, I would have had to do all that, put that mad curve into the spine, into the into the back bit for my sway back, and then try and fit a zip in, which I have done in the past. It is a little bit annoying. It's a bit awkward. So um, yeah, I'm glad I didn't have to put the zip in. It doesn't need it though, it goes over the head really, really easily. So yeah, after doing this uh, facing, stitching this in, it's literally just hemming. Then go to the machine, do that top stitching all the way around the neck, and then try it on and see how the length is on me.
finished it. I finally finished it. It's been a long, exhausting journey, but I finished it. I am so, so, so pleased with this dress. It's so comfortable and so flattering. It's lovely. I can't believe I spent so long looking at this on the, on the website and, and dismissing it. And plenty of times just thought, mm, it doesn't look anything special. I probably wouldn't wear that. Um, but I think this time round, it's because of the fact that we have been in lockdown and not been able to go out. And I was looking for things that were more comfortable, warm, um, made of jersey. So I finally bought it in December. I'm so pleased I did. I absolutely love it. It's so, so nice. I'm going to put in pictures of um, me standing around in this. Uh, because you won't be able to see the full thing here but the um, top stitching looks really nice I did a straight stitch on this um, it doesn't tell you any particular stitch to do um, but doesn't overly stretch when you put it on because it seems like it's quite easy to put on and off this um, dress so the top stitching was fine um, you won't be able to see that probably but it looks really nice it really finishes it well keeps the facing in and I'm so pleased with my shoulders, the neckline and the princess seams. Um, they fit, I think, really, really nicely. Um, yeah, I'm really pleased. And then, you know, the waist sits where I want it to sit. Um, yeah, and these little pleats at the front are so, so nice. They're such a nice detail. Um, and then, of course, you have them on the back as well, which really is lovely. Um, I showed my husband and he doesn't ever really sort of say much whenever I, <laughs> whenever I show him, when I give him a little fashion show of all the things I've made. But usually I can tell by a little glint in his eye, he has a little glint in his eye and he, and he sort of does this noise of, hmm, so that means it's really nice. <laughs> I have interpreted all his, all his grunts and he's, um, he's not saying very much. <laughs> his facial expressions for actual feelings and words so yeah I think he really liked it and I just think it's so cute I'm gonna make probably more of these next winter and in fact the twirl that I was making the stripey version I'm gonna make that one as well because I really like the way it looks I don't know whether the fabric will hold out it does tend to I think I mean I've said this before it does bobble a little bit that fabric it was only very inexpensive fabric I bought um, I think on a market stall, so, but I'm still going to make it up, and I'm still going to wear it around the house. I think it'll be fine, it's really snugly warm. So yeah, definitely next winter I'm going to make more of these. Now I've got this pattern down, spent, you know, however long <laughs> adjusting this, I think I'm going to make quite a few. So yeah, and then the hem, I only took off um, another 1.5 centimetres off the hem. Um, I thought I might take a little bit more off. Then I thought, mm, no, don't do it, don't do it, neat, because um, you know you're not young anymore. You don't want to, you don't want to be showing those legs off too much. So I've gone with a nice length. Um, you might not be able to see it here, but no, it's just um, I've made it quite quite shortish, but not overly short. And I'm going to wear it with tights anyway, like I said before. Um, yeah, I love it. I really, really love it. So if you're going to make this pattern, definitely give it a go. Be prepared, however, to make many adjustments if you do have issues with princess seams. However, if you have none, because I'm sure there's people out there that can make um, a garment in a princess seam and it fits them lovely, then, you know, that's amazing if you can. Um, but if you have issues like me, perhaps you've got a small um, chest to bust ratio or, you know, you've got a full bust, um, you know, any of those issues, be prepared, maybe make a twirl. Um, and you only have to make the front panels, sorry, the front panel, the side panels, and then the back panels. You don't have to bother with any of the other bits when you're making the twirl. I never ever bothered to make any other elements. It was only the twirl on this one I made the sleeve just to see how this was going to fit in the armhole. Um, but yeah, I would definitely recommend it. I really, really love it. I can't say it enough. I really, really love it. So, yes, that's the end of this. Um, so along, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been information, informational, 
informative, that's the right word, make my own words up. Um, I hope it's been informative and you've um, it's been able to help you maybe if you've been making it or you've been stuck on anything. Um, I mean, really, generally, the pattern's quite straightforward. I think it's just, just the fitting. I think fitting is the major problem with sewing. If we could all just make something straight from the packet and it fitted us, it would be amazing, but it never does. So, yes, thank you for watching. And if you liked this video, then please um, hit the thumbs up and if you'd like to see more of my vlogs then um, hit the, the subscribe button it's completely free all it means is that you will get notifications of my next uh, vlogs um, and hit the bell that's it you have to hit the bell to make sure that you get those notifications but yeah and I'm gonna be doing a March plans I'm really late for the March plans but I'm gonna try and get something made it probably won't be very much now because this has gone into March. I'm going to try and wing it and say it's still a February make <laughs> because it's only gone into the first week of March. But yeah, so please subscribe and also follow me on Instagram um, because I always put all my makes up on my uh, page there. So thank you so very much and have an amazing day, whatever you are doing or what you've got planned today. And today is actually International Women's Day, so um, happy International Women's Day to all you lovely ladies out there. Yeah, hopefully um, you are all feeling the love today if you're a lady and know that in your heart you are amazing, fantastic, powerful, wise, um, and yeah, you are amazing. End of. So... Thank you for watching, have an amazing day, and I shall see you next time. Bye.